Hi, I'm Richard from Plan Photonics and welcome to another in our series of LED grow light technology videos. Today we're going to be talking about something very important and that is cooling. Now if you don't cool your LED, your LEDs sufficiently, they burn out. Uh, they overheat, they start drawing you more power, get even hotter and burn out. If you looked at the one star reviews on some of the cheap Amazon LED grow lights that we looked at in an earlier video, you'll notice that they consistently mention that the LEDs burned out very quickly after they bought the light, usually in a couple of weeks. And that's due to insufficient cooling. Now, first of all, we have to understand what we mean by cooling. Cooling is taking energy in the form of heat from somewhere where it's causing a problem, like the LEDs, and getting rid of it, shifting it away somewhere else. And that's the thing, you can't simply get rid of it. All you can do is transfer it from one place to another. You can't just make it vanish. So let's look at how things lose heat energy. And to demonstrate it, I have a cup of nice hot tea. Now, first of all, if you put your hand near the side, you can feel heat. That's because this is emitting infrared energy. Now, basically everything that's not at absolute zero emits infrared energy. You've probably seen those uh, night vision videos where the person or an animal turns up white against a dark background, that's because they're emitting a lot more heat than the surrounding trees and plants and everything, which makes them stand out. Now, this is known as radiative cooling. It's radiating energy as infrared. If I put my hand over the top here, you can again feel heat. That is the cup and the tea heating up the air which is rising up against my hand and warming it up slightly. That is called convective cooling. And the last one is touch it. Not only can you feel the heat, but you're actually warming up your hand and you can feel it. And uh, that is conductive cooling. That is the heat actually being conducted straight through materials that are touching each other and going from the hot part to the colder part. Now that's an important concept. Heat always flows from the hot area or the hot object to the cool area or object. It never works in reverse. Imagine you're making a nice gin and tonic on a hot summer's day and you put an ice cube in. The heat flows from the drink to the ice cube which is colder, warms it up and it starts to melt. Now if energy could flow the other way, you could put the ice cube in, the ice cube would get colder and it would start shedding its heat into the uh, drink and the drink would start getting hotter and eventually boil. That doesn't happen. Okay, It always goes from the hot area to the cold. Now one other thing about the cup of tea, which we'll get into in a minute, is if you want to cool it off faster, what you do? You blow on it. The reason why you blow on it to cool it off is that air basically sucks for cooling, which is why almost all cars are liquid cooled, for example, the engines. Uh, air is a lousy medium for cooling things because it has a low specific heat capacity. That means it takes very little energy to heat it up. It, that means that it takes very little energy from the hot object. Yeah. Uh, water, on the other hand, takes a lot of energy to heat up and it makes an extremely good coolant. Uh, a good example of comparison for, would be the air coming out of a hair dryer that you're drying your hair with is coming out at 100, 150 degrees centigrade, well above boiling point of water, and yet it doesn't burn or blister your skin. If you were to splash some water at those temperatures or superheated vapor steam at those temperatures, it would cook you more or less instantly. Okay, That's because water has much more energy in it than the air does. Because air can't hold very much energy, you need to basically move the air past the heat sink or the top of the light fairly quickly. If it just sits there, it stops being able to absorb any more heat and the circuit board starts heating up. So what you have to do is mount a fan on it, which blows the air past and allows it to cool much more efficiently. The alternative, of course, is passive cooling. In passive cooling, you just have a really big heat sink. Uh, with a fan, 
you don't need that big of a heat sink because you've got the fan. With passive cooling, you need a much, much bigger heat sink. So if you're looking at uh, buying a passively cooled light, make sure it's got a nice big deep heat sink. And the way those work is as they heat up the air, they have much bigger fins, they heat the air up, the air rises, and as it rises, it draws in more air. So it, it does kind of have a, a ventilation effect as well. Okay, now we have an idea about how things uh, can lose heat. Let's take a look at the components of an LED grow light and see how each one of them contributes to cooling. Now, to start off, to start off with, we've got this. It's a metal cord printed circuit board. Now, if you take apart anything else like a TV, whatever, your mobile phone, you will find inside that the circuit board is actually made of plastic. It's actually made of fiberglass. But these ones are made of metal, aluminum. And that's because aluminum is an extremely good conductor of heat. Uh, next to copper and gold, it's the most conductive metal, I believe. Now, these consist of several layers. You've got your thick aluminum plate. Uh, this is two millimeter thick. Now, in normal LED grow lights, you'll find that the circuit boards are between 0.5 millimeters and one millimeter. Uh, this is one of ours from Clampatonics, and it's two millimeters thick to help it conduct heat better. Now, you've got your aluminum layer. Then on top of that, there is an insulating layer. That stops everything from shorting out. If you just tried sticking stuff on the aluminum board, obviously it wouldn't work. So you've got a, an insulating layer, and this also conducts heat fairly well. Now, like everything else, they come in different quality levels. This is a very high quality board. Uh, in a typical LED grow light, the thermal conductivity rating of this insulating layer is between uh, 0.5 and 1. Uh, these ones are 2.2, which is one of the highest that you can get. And the higher the thermal conductivity, the easier it is for the LEDs to shed heat. Now, people think, oh, LED grow lights, they don't generate much heat. Well, those tiny little LEDs, which are only a couple of millimeters square, are putting out something in the range of, we say on average, one watt of heat, which doesn't sound like very much, but when you actually look at the size of it, it's quite a lot for that size and that small area, and it'll build up quite rapidly. Now, on top of the insulating layer, you've got uh, strips of conductive copper, uh, which also form the solder pads, and then the whole thing is coated with a protective enamel. So, you'll also notice that the back of this is not plain polished aluminum. It's actually anodized, and there's a reason for that. Believe it or not, anodized aluminum can emit and transfer heat way, way, about 30 times better than plain aluminum. The reason is, is that the anodizing is kind of like an etching process, and it actually cuts little grooves into the aluminum, and that actually increases the surface area. So you actually have, it sounds paradoxical, but you actually have much more surface area than if you had it polished. Kind of weird, but anyway. Right, the next part that you're going to see is a heat sink. Now, this is a massive one, and it's much bigger than you're going to find in most uh, LED grow lights, but it makes a good example. What the heat sink does is, as it heats up from the LEDs, these vertical fins increase the surface area which means that it can transfer heat into air much more efficiently yeah. and again this is anodized it even has little ridges on the inside i don't think you can see them uh, to increase the surface area even more so this is quite a high quality piece of heat sink um, the ones that you get in a led grow light probably got fins about that high on them if that uh, so now the next thing of course is the fan by using a fan to push the air across it you're pushing much more air across than just leaving it like this and it greatly increases the the cooling uh, there is a problem with most LED grow lights and that is they use tiny tiny little fans now the smaller the fan the less air it moves so if you want to move a reasonable amount of air past the heatsink, you need to run the fan extremely fast. 
this makes them really, really noisy. And one of my customers was saying how quiet his plant photonic light was compared to his previous one. He said it sounded like a jet taking off in his spare bedroom. So that's why we use large fans. So there's one other part that might not be apparent to most people, but it's very important. Uh, those of you who have put together a PC will remember that you put your uh, processor chip in and then you put a whacking great heat sink on top of it. Now in between the two of them, you put heat, you put heat sink compound. The reason is, is that the two surfaces, your heat sink and the top of the circuit board, are not perfectly flat and there will be tiny little gaps in there and that will greatly decrease the cooling efficiency of your heat sink. Now again, like everything else, they come in different quality levels. This is your standard white grease. Uh, it's got a conductivity rating of about one. This is what you will find in pretty much any commercial lead grow light. Then we have a better quality one. This one has a conductive rating of 3.5 and it has, looks kind of like aluminum powder, which is probably what's in it. And then finally, if we get up to this stuff, this is Arctic Cooling MX4. It's really, really expensive. A little tiny tube costs about 25 euros, um, but it is a very, very good conductor of heat. So like everything else, quality matters. Now, there's one other consideration, and that is that any place where the heat cannot pass easily from the LEDs, through the circuit board, through the heat sink compound, to the heat sink, at any point in there where you use something that doesn't conduct heat very well, you get heat buildup on the other side of it. Imagine, for example, that you've got a 10-lane motorway. That's the path from the LEDs to the outside air, okay? And you've got lots of traffic and it's flowing along nice and smooth and fast. Then you hit a roadblock. They've shut off, say, six lanes of traffic to do repairs on the road. Cars can still get through, but they bunch up and you wind up with a, a big queue of cars trying to get through on these four lanes and that's basically what happens if you use say low quality heat sink compound or low quality thermal conductors on the circuit board the heat will build up it won't be able to pass and you wind up with a problem now there is one other component in most lead lights apart from the circuit board the power supplies which i didn't cover here uh, the heat sink and the fan and that is the case now if you go to our website and take a look at our lights yes we do make LED, LED grow lights uh, you'll notice that our lights look completely different from other lights in fact there's no case there's no case for a very good reason things like radiating heat as we know from the cup and under most circumstances objects will actually lose most of their heat energy through radiative cooling. There's a problem if you stick it in a box, because what happens is it radiates the heat, the heat then hits the side of the box, heats the box up, and then the box starts radiating heat back at the circuit board. And that is why we don't use boxes on our LED grow lights. So just an interesting little fact. One thing that I would suggest if you uh, decide to buy one of those uh, inexpensive lead grow lights is take it apart, take the heat sink off, clean it in the circuit board, and invest in a tube of something like this. It's only about uh, three or four euros, pounds, dollars, whatever, uh, from eBay or AliExpress, and get one that's around three, three and a half. Uh, anything higher than that is pointless. Uh, the circuit board isn't good enough and probably don't have enough cooling to make it worthwhile. But that is a really good upgrade. Another thing that I'd recommend is get some of these fans and replace the really crappy noisy fans that you've got. These things last forever. Um, I've been using these and excellence fans for 
for 10 years and uh, they're still all working perfectly and they're also much much quieter I'd suggest the Arctic F series uh, they're a plain simple high quality fan and they'll make a big difference to your grow light in the previous videos I've concentrated on giving you a completely unbiased and honest series. In the previous videos, I've tried to give you as much information as I possibly can in a completely unbiased way. In fact, some of you watching this may not even realize that, yes, I have a company which manufactures LED grow lights. Well, in the next video, we're going to be looking at our lights and you're going to get an explanation of why they look completely different from any other grow light on the market. It's because they're designed differently and there's very good reason for it. So please come back and watch the next video in about a week and until then, good luck and happy growing.